Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Stories to Share. My name is Joe Steinfield. I'm the moderator of the series. And today we have the sixth session of the third season. And once again, I'm very glad to see a large turnout. And we have people also joining us online. How many of you are here for the first time for Stories to Share? <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Uh, well, you picked a good one. Uh, today's speaker, as you know, is a New Hampshire institution. She's the keeper of the. She's the keeper of the tradition. Uh, many of us remember Folkways, that wonderful Peterborough spot, and as we all know, Kate McNally has been providing music to New Hampshire Public Radio listeners now for 28 years. And, and as I always do before these sessions, I had a chat with today's speaker and I said, Kate, how much longer are you going to do this? And she said, indefinitely. <laughs> Now, Kate has had an interesting life in Alaska. In fact, she was there recently. If you corner her afterwards on her iPhone, she can show you uh, the sun rising at, what, 10 in the morning, the moons, uh, moonlight, and the northern lights. I think if you haven't been there or you haven't seen them, we should all go together. <laughs> and she's lived in. Texas, but basically she's very much a New Hampshire person. And for newcomers, I will say that all of our speakers are from the Monadnock region. That's one of the requirements. And the other is that they have stories to share. So welcome Kate McNally. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Good evening, everyone. Um, for those of you who may have thought you were coming to see Katie McNally, the esteemed fiddle player, I'm not her. Uh, she's blonde and I'm, well, not blonde. And uh, she plays an extraordinary fiddle and I play records, okay? Um, so if you need to, go ahead, feel free to leave, get your refund, or just politely stay and you'll hear some music from a couple other musical giants in my esteem. <laughs> Thank you to Joseph Steinfield and Ed Wodasek, as well as the other folks who make this Stories to Share series happen. I really am honored um, that I've been chosen to, to share my story with you tonight. Um, There's so many brilliant guests in this series and still more to come. So this is my story about folk, community, and good fortune. So. Uh, I remember doing a, a visiting a radio station when I was a kid. I was a brownie. Anybody here ever a brownie? Okay, there you go. Um, and everyone got to pick out a 45 from a big bin. Everybody know what a 45 is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, I pulled out a Clancy Brothers 45 mm -hmm. called I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen. Oh, that's nice. Very interesting. My name's Kathleen. And um, I just thought it's meant to be. And, and it was. I should have known then, but I, I, really, didn't, I really didn't get it. Um, everybody know what this is? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, transistor radio. It's a transistor radio. And I loved listening to the transistor radio. Um, I really loved listening to mystery theater. Um, when I would visit New Hampshire during the summer, we would come and stay in Chesham. And I would listen um, in our tent. Um, to the transistor. I'd had a book called Nellie Bly Around the World in 80 Days. And um, I just loved those summers. Um, the sounds of the Chesham night, um, the backdrop for whatever play happened to be on Mystery Theater that night. And that was really just when there weren't any Red Sox games. There were Red Sox games. Of course, of course there were. So breathe deep, and you might just smell summer around the corner. 
you know, those were those days were really special for me. We'd visit my mom's best friend Iva, and um, she. The story is that she made coffee so strong you could stand a spoon up in it. Um, and that was my mom's community, and it was part of my community. It was uh, a deck of cards, strong coffee, and uh, baseball on the radio. Uh, my community in Alaska growing up was quite a bit different than what I experienced during those summers. Um, it was insulated and isolated on a military base. In Alaska. Our neighborhood really, really active in the summer. Um, we had uh, Friday night fish fries, salmon, um, sometimes halibut, and um, kids rolling recklessly, dangerously, so much fun, um, in enormous airplane inner tubes. You get inside it and then roll. Um, so much fun. You gotta make sure you're holding on to the little stem though, otherwise it could be really it could poke your eye out. So um, we had so much fun playing hide and seek till the wee hours of the night during these long and really light days under the midnight sun in the summer. It's a really close community. Um, it was an outpost in the far northwest of what we call the lower 48. And as a preteen, um, this is a little side thing, I got to go on the Seven Up Club. And the Seven Up Club was like a dance program, kind of like American Bandstand, only um, it was really cool and it was aired on one of the two television stations that we had access to. Um, kids lined up at the TV station for hours just to get in to be on TV to dance to whatever there was. Maybe it was the Archies or the Archies. <laughs> so somewhere along the line, my sister, who was 12 years older than me, turned me on to this band called Buffalo Springfield. Um, and that was um, Neil Young, and Jim Messina, and Stephen Stills. And, and this was after, of course, she taught me about Elvis, and she taught me to jitterbug. She taught me how to twist. Um, those days were really fun, too. I mean, I'm sure she didn't really appreciate it. She was older, and there I was, six years old, twisting and jitterbugging. But, but what I learned during those times when I was also turned on to the Everly Brothers and those sweet, sweet brother harmonies um, was about Buffalo Springfield and, and how much different they were than the monkeys I'd been playing my badminton racket to in the basement. Um, it, was, it was the Buffalo Springfield music and Stephen Stills and Neil Young, it was more serious. It wasn't so poppy. Um, and, and my taste started evolving. Um, and it was that thoughtfulness that I really really started to appreciate. Um, I remember seeing Jazz Joplin on TV on the Johnny Carson show, and I thought, man, I cannot understand those words. That woman is screaming. And, um, and then I, I saw Bob Dylan, and I was like, man, that guy cannot sing. <laughs> that guy cannot sing. And I was such a snob, but you know what? I was only 13, but what a poet. What a poet. And what a legend. We're so lucky to have had Bob Dylan. When my father uh, retired here in New Hampshire, my community changed. I was all of a sudden like immersed into like a community with greasers, uh, rednecks, farmers, stoners, uh, jocks, you know, and there's some normies in there too, some hippies. Um, it was a far cry from the insulated environment that I was used to on a military base. And then, so my teen years were really spent acclimating to what we military dependents called civilian life. Um, I'm not sure which was more civilian, but anyway, I gravita gravitated toward drama club and music um, and found great, great joy in harmony and singing with others and community. And that's really when my community of music started to take shape around music. I still love that. I still really get goosebumps when I hear good harmony. Um, I listened to Carol King, Janice Ian, Jim Croce, all things Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Um, Simon and Garfunkel, just to name a few. Also, I can't forget James Taylor. Um, I still love the Kingston Trio, and I loved, I loved Eddie Arnold. God didn't make little green apples, and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. I loved Roger Miller, dang me, and Homer and Jethro. Jethro Burns, I would learn later, was a, an incredible mandolin player. Um, and I also loved Loretta Lynn. My mom turned me on to that. Then in college, whew, yeah, in college, I was turned on to the Grateful Dead. <coughs> Songs like 
El Paso, me and my uncle, Big Boss Man, and I Know You Writer. Those songs triggered memories for me of Marty Robbins and Johnny Cash playing on my mom's record player. The music was like a thread that kept me connected to home and a sense of place. I mean, not quite ready to let go of the sensation of my mom stroking my hair as a child or the aroma of Sunday dinner and fresh baked bread. You know, music has a way of doing that, right? It, it gives us a sense of place. In a flash, we can be transported to another place in time that involves all of our senses, leaving us with maybe a sigh or a tear or simply just a sense of connectedness, kind of like a, a hug for the mind, a hug in the memory. So in college, I lived down the hill from the Stone Church in Newmarket, and there were groups like a band called Lunch at the Dump, no kidding, um, and a group called Smoochin'. They performed there, and uh, Sunday nights were pretty special. They'd have a nice dinner at the Stone Church, and Phil Morrissey frequented the Stone Church quite a bit when he was um, just coming around. And you know, those were really interesting times for me. I was, I was very young. Um, but the funny thing is that my apartment had a, a large replica of dog manure. Seriously. Wow. Big replica of dog manure in the yard <laughs> that my, it's the person that lived there before apparently was like a, a pottery major or something and wanted to have some utility out of this thing. And so my roommate tied his dog to that big pile. It's not, it's not there anymore. Uh, I'm sh I know it's not there anymore because they, they paved it out, you know, they tore it down and uh, it became a parking lot for a bank. Um, in Newmarket, um, and then I understand that that bank might have been financing the Seabrook nuclear power plant. It was like a construction work in progress thing. And so, speaking of Seabrook, we'll talk about that later. Um, my favorite class at UNH was communications. I sat in an auditorium with I don't know how many other freshmen that all wanted to be part of the communications thing, whether it was TV, radio, or whatever. I just thought, I just loved the idea of communications. And I loved the idea of philosophy. I wanted to be a philosophy major. You know, that's not really an employable skill, I don't think, but, um, <laughs> but here's what I remember about the communications classes. Marshall McLuhan, and a medium is the message. Meaning, each medium is a unique type of environment whose widespread use reshapes people and culture. Sounds about right, right? Thank you, Marshall McLuhan. My medium has become radio. That class and the college and the college lifestyle swallowed me up and spit me out. Um, and I returned home with a better appreciation for Jackson Brown, um, Little Feet, and The Grateful Dead, a few bands from that time. Um, a lot of my friends quit college and they hit the road to follow the dead. <laughs> I got married. Um, they did that, I did that. I moved to South Carolina where I got turned on to this radio station called 3WZ Down on the Farm. It was really the coolest radio station ever. They played really awesome music. They played, played like Joni Mitchell, Bonnie Reed, B.B. King. You know, music that I had never really been turned on to before. I was just loving the music. Um, and it seems like I've always gravitated to the independent music rather than what you hear on the top 40 dial. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. I, I thought I was what I wanted to be when I grew up. I thought that's what I was gonna be. I was the mom of an adorable little girl. Her name was Leo. Um, I thought her name was Gaelic when we named her. Turns out it's Hebrew. Um, <laughs> I was a wife and I was a waitress in a pizza shop that served free peanuts. And you'll talk about a place in time. I could kind of still smell the pizza and beer in my hair. From Dino's, from Dino's Pizza Parlor. Charleston, South Carolina was really nice, but it wasn't New England. There's no seasons there. I love the seasons of New England. I loved being in New Hampshire. And so we moved back here to get closer to home. And we lived at Kent State College where my husband was able to take advantage of the GI Bill. Um, and so I should credit him for exposing me to doing radio because um, he was involved in radio, so he kind of got me into it, but don't tell him I said that. Um, so college radio, so my first time in the radio station really was not my most stellar moment. Um, 
College radio was a little loosey-goosey back then. He had a few friends in the studio, because that's what we did at college radio. We had people in the studio. You know, we chatted, and multitask, and put on records. And, and so, tidy, helpful person that I was, um, I took the record album from the turntable, I put it away while everybody was chatting, and then someone realized that, hey, wasn't that the album that was playing? So, there I was. And there was like 50 watts of dead air. <laughs> Nothing on the air, because I was trying to be tidy and helpful. Um, <laughs> so it was very, very quiet. So I didn't know if I could ever go back there, but I, and it, I ended up going back. And there was this station at this time that I, we got turned on to as well called WSLE in Peterborough. Mm -hmm. They call it the Folks Station. And much of the music reminded me of our days in Charleston. It had jazz and it had folk music and it had just really nice independent music and re really relatable hosts. Um, in fact, my husband and I listened from our hospital room in Peterborough requesting a song from the radio station. Such a groupie. <laughs> um, I was a huge fan of Mary DeRozier and her Banished Misfortune program, but this particular request was during the day. She wasn't on the air, but the DJ was very kind to us and played Sugar Magnolia mm. um, in honor of our new baby girl, Maggie. Um, it was like, it was like we had a connection. We had a connection in time and a community of friends wow. united by the power of music. That was WSLE at that time, for me. One of my friends here tonight has been in Peterborough for quite a long time, and I've invited her to play a song. So Ms. Wendy Keith, what can you play for us? Thank you, Kate. Hello, everybody. Um, I am planning my, the first of the two songs that I'm going to do today is a cover of a song that I recorded several years ago um, by one of the best singer-songwriters I've had the privilege of calling my friend, uh, Julie Snow. Uh, and this song is uh, it's called Cracks in the Sky, which is kind of a reference to a, a Leonard Cohen quote. Um, and it starts off very sad and, and a little bit dark, but then it makes a turn, so be ready for the turn. Oh, hang on one second. Let's get this capo doing its job here. That's better, okay. Sometimes it's so dark There's no light At the end of your tunnel Sometimes it's so cold You're chilled to the bone Sometimes you're so sad You've lost best thing that you've ever had sometimes you're so sad you just want to go home crawl into your bed pull the covers right over your head and you pray for relief for a long, dreamless sleep But keep your eyes Cracks in the sky where an angel might slip through. Just when you thought all your chances were shot, she'll wrap her soft wings around you. Just 
just a few words or the soft gift of silence she'll sit by your side and she'll wait for you to mend in the end there's no medicine that can heal like the sweet kiss of kindness seals up that dark hole so you can start over again you belong to the band of the brokenhearted they'll open their arms to you it's a blessing and a privilege to keep their company you will learn this too so keep your eye on the cracks in the sky where an angel might slip through just when you thought all your chances were shot she'll wrap her soft wings over She'll wrap her soft wings She'll wrap her soft wings around you Thank you. Just a gorgeous song, Cracks in the Sky, written by Julie Snow, who spends part of her time in Nelson, New Hampshire, and also lives in Cambridge another part of the year. She's written some of my favorite songs. You know, another thing happened when I uh, hung out with a friend at the radio station in college. Um, my friend uh, invited me, my friend uh, invited me to hang out with her at the radio station, and then she went home to get something. Um, and she never came back. And so that meant that I needed to fumble my way through um, some semblance of a program. And fortunately for me, I fumbled okay. And the station manager said, you know, you should get your FCC license, which you needed then. You should take the test and uh, sign up for a slot. So that was all as a result of my friend, friend playing that prank on me. Um, and I loved, I loved practicing. I would be in front of the mic going, this is WKNH 91.3. This is 91.3 WKNH. I just, I just love, I was ready. I, I practiced. I practiced. So I was all set. And then not that long after that, my husband and I parted ways and, um, and I went back to school, and I resumed my studies. I created a radio program at Keene State it was called Fiddlesticks. I did that for like six years. It was a, a Sunday afternoon from four to seven featuring Celtic, acoustic, bluegrass uh, music, kind of what you hear on Sunday nights if you tune in to the folk show. Um, back then, we played long playing records. Remember those? <laughs> long playing records. Um, there were two sides. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and one album, and it's kind of tricky sometimes, you know, I have to feel for the little thing, the spindle thing in the middle, um, get it just right, but, um, but I got pretty good at finding that little thing. Um, one of the albums I really, really liked that really inspired me was an album by a fiddle player named Mark O'Connor. He had this really cool album. It was a nice album cover. I like album covers because I can read them. <laughs> so, you know, CDs are a little harder now. Um, but this album called On the Rampage, um, it had a picture of him barefooted on a skateboard with, uh, on a bridge with the sun setting behind him. And I just thought that was the coolest thing. But then he turned on the music and he, set, he did this song called Opus One, Come Ride With Me. And um, he started off the song with, hello, come ride with me. I kind of had some thoughts, maybe that's how I would start my show, but I never did. Um, but I got to tell you, I never heard the fiddle played like the fiddle was played on that album. Mark O'Connor, what a master. And that was like an inspiration for me to find more master musicians 
and share them with my little, little, trusted but faithful college radio audience. Some Sundays I'd only get music that I'd never heard before. You know, I'd go through the, the library and I'd just pick things out I'd never heard of and plop, you know, plop it on the, the spindle just to see what would happen. Um, but I gotta tell you, for Sundays, for the past 43 years, I've dedicated Sundays, that one day a week, in one way or another, at one station or another, to music and to my interest in sharing the music that inspires me or interests me. And that is what I'm talking about tonight is a little bit about folk music. So let me just say, what I have learned over the years has come from reading liner notes and reading record jackets and CD covers. I used Alan Lomax's Field Recordings, Folk Songs of America book um, as a reference and other authors like Scott Alaric, who was a wonderful reviewer and a musician, worked at the Boston Globe. Um, I learned by being curious. That's what I was taught from a journalism professor at Kent State College. She said, you just have to be curious. Her name was Shirley Keddy. I'll never forget her saying, just be curious. So um, that was great advice for me, just be curious. Another uh, influence was Lou Dumont. He, was, he just had the smoothest voice ever. Um, he taught, um, he did radio, he taught radio. Um, he um, told me, he did a program called 78s and 33s. Eventually, he retired to the Cape where he did a program there. But you could often hear his voice booming out over those 50 watts or even up the 50,000 watts at the local radio station. And he said, he said, and just the nicest man, he said, just be yourself. Just be yourself at the mic. Be so authentic that somebody in the grocery line will recognize your voice. Hmm. <laughs> so I've always just tried to be who I am, warts and all, okay? Um, while I was a student at Kent State, I got support from an organization called Women for Higher Education. I was a non-traditional student, was a single mom of two, two daughters. Um, and through that organization, I met about other, a lot of other families who were just dipping their toes in the world of academia. Um, I met women who were part of an organi organization um, to stop construction of the Seabrook nuclear plant. See, I told you I'd come back to Seabrook eventually. Um, these folks were really inspirational. They were very passionate. Um, and they were so passionate that they ended up in jail um, <laughs> over on the seacoast as part of an action by the Clamshell Alliance. And, um, being one of their neighbors and friends, I see the logical choice to finish details to put on a show that they had all planned, and now they're in jail. Um, so I had my first opportunity to, to help put on a show. It was in the Mabel Brown Room at Kent State College, and it featured a, a, a band called Bright Morning Star, which featured the amazing talent of a wonderful activist named Charlie King and Marsha Taylor. There were a lot of others, but I can't remember them all. And, and I don't remember how that concert happened. I just know it happened. And just doing that concert that evening gave me some confidence. And it was really the beginning of my opportunity to somehow be of service to my college community um, and to learn how to do things like that. I didn't really have the confidence before that. Because remember, I was the waitress in a pizza shop. Um, I didn't attend a lot of shows. Um, I was a young single mom. But the shows that were most memorable to me were uh, the few shows that I saw in Peterborough at the Folkway that, that Joseph mentioned. The folk music venue, the Folkway, was where I had the honor of seeing Kate Wolf, and I saw Louis Collins, Chris Smither, Warren Starr, Gary Mihalik, and the late, great John Hartford. Um, many legendary folk musicians passed through there. I could not, we'd be here for a couple days if I mentioned all of those people that graced the Folkway stage. It was an entity unto itself, and the staff and volunteers kind of like breathed in the Folkway energy. Um, you know, it's, that's what it seemed like. They were a community, the Folkway community. Um, I just love, there's an album called Baptism of Fire by Louis Collins. And that, um, that album was recorded, at least in part, at the Folkway. Um, Baptism of Fire, coincidentally, is a tune written by Julie Snow, who wrote that first song, Cracks in the Sky. Um, when you listen to the album, 
And I think the album is what you gotta listen to, the vinyl. Because when you listen to the album, Baptism Fire, you can almost hear community in the grooves. On songs like Rudy Toot Toot for the Moon, and the song, the Wildflower song, you can almost hear the voices in those chairs, at those tables. Um, if you ever need a lift, check out the Baptism of Fire album, because it's really nice. And you can listen to the CD if you really have to. Uh, you don't have to find the, uh, the vinyl. But if, um, you know, I was, I was sad to see the Folkway go, even though I didn't go there a whole lot. I know, though, that there are so many people that are still grieving the closing of those hallowed doors. Um, soon after uh, my stint, or actually during my stint at um, Keene State College Radio, I was hired at WKNE um, to work there um, as doing an overnight job. And, you know, that was a tough choice for me. Cause, you know, actually, I was feeding my children, um, doing pretty okay, working at a fall bearing factory. Um, and uh, I did my radio show once a week. And there they were saying, you know, come do radio and do it overnight. And um, I wasn't really sure that was the best, you know, career move, but it was so glamorous. Radio, remember, I'm the groupie, right? Radio. I did, um, I ended up doing all things commercial for radio. I did uh, copywriting, I was a production manager, I was a midday host, overnight host, morning drive host. I, I knew Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox, Patriots, I did all the sports things. Um, and then on Sundays, my respite was the, the, uh, the lighter side. And I used to have fun saying out loud on the, on the mic, 50,000 watts of folk. <laughs> 50,000 watts of folk. Yeah. Get jazzed, everybody. It was 6 a.m. What were we doing? 50,000 watts of it. Um, so, um, you know, one of the benefits from doing that program while I was there, I was there for six years, and um, one of the benefits was that, you know, venues, there was this venue in Keene called Chalkboard West, and they used to have some incredible, incredible performers there. They had a group called Aztec Two-Step, they had, let's see, uh, Devon Square played there, Tom Dean, Devon Square, and um, I was introduced to this other singer-songwriter who's pretty astounding. Um, and that is uh, somebody that Andy Cowing, the champion for musicians at the Chalkboard West, introduced me to uh, a wonderful performer and longtime friend of like 40 years, Tom Perzoli. Tom, could you please play <laughs> something for us? Tom Perzoli, everybody. So, I just love Kate. And I, 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 Stevie Wonder was born the same year as me, and I wish I could just play, Isn't she lovely? <laughs> but but I, I don't quite have an Emmy, so I have to play something that I know. But she, she's a great person. It's great to see her stuff. And uh, out there, she's talking about the folk way. Uh, Stan Rogers and Garnet Rogers used to play there a lot. And uh, Garnet sold me this guitar last year, and I'm very, very happy to hear that. This is like a great guitar. He's a great guy, and I have no idea why I wrote this song, but I'm not playing anything too serious, but sometimes we don't always feel like we want to be in the human body. So this song says, I wish I was a frog out in a pond. I'd kiss a princess with a magic wand. Turn a, I'd turn into a prince, I'd be handsome and tall. Live happily ever after in a castle wall. Frog and palm with the magic wand. I turn into a prince and I'd be gone. I wish I was a whale in the deep blue sea. I'd have great big waves crashing over all me. I'd dive to the bottom, go way down deep. Blow a great big geyser everybody could see. Whale in the deep, in the deep blue sea. Spraying all the people taking pictures of me. Yeah, but I'm just a man and I'm sitting here. Spinning through space on a big blue sphere. I am living and loving just as best as I can. Whenever I see you, darling, I know how lucky I am. When I have kids in the audience, they have them throw out animals at me. I try to make something up, but I'll stick with something I know tonight. I'd 
like to be a bird in the atmosphere Way up there looking way down here I built myself a nest over in your eaves And my friends could come in and they could visit me A bird up there looking way down here Way down here from the atmosphere I wish I had some magic wings like a bee I'd have honey in a nest high up in a tree I could visit a flower, eat for free Fly so fast nobody could see me Be on a flower, I'd be passing time In the summer sun on a honey vine Bird up there looking way down here Way up in the sea, diving way down deep Be on a, oh, uh, wait a minute <laughs> Frog in a pond with a magic wand Turn into a prince and I'd be gone And I'm just a man sitting here Spinning through space on a big blue sphere And I'm living and loving just as best I can When I'm with you, darling, I know how lucky I am Sometimes I wish I was a frog or a fish but you sure know how to make me glad that I'm your man Girl, you sure know how to make me glad that I'm your man You make me so glad that I am your man Oh, yeah Oh, yeah <laughs> Thank you Well, not only is Tom Pirazzoli an incredible songwriter and musician but he is a wonderful painter. I am so in awe of his talent and also grateful for his support, but you should definitely visit his website to see his paintings. And sometimes he does um, exhibits with music and his artwork around New England. So if you can get to see one of his shows, I really think you should check it out, check out his website as well. This was just happened to be the one that caught my eye, but um, so sweet, beautiful. Thank you, Thank Tom, you. for sharing all of your talent. Um, you know, I, um, I got an album in the mail at um, WKNE when I was doing the program. It was called The Lighter Side from 6 to 10, Sunday mornings. Um, it was kind of like, I thought, I like, used to like the kid that it was like a, the, the name of a friendly's breakfast. The lighter side. Don't forget, it's 50,000 watts of folk, but it was like, it sounded like a friendly's breakfast. But anyway, I got this, I got this album um, for a Bluegrass Music Festival. I mean, I got, a, um, yeah, I got an album. It's a scholarship album and also a license plate for, that said Winterhawk on it. And, um, and what it was was it was, you know, a promotion to tell us, um, to tell the community and radio listeners about a scholarship program for young musicians that they were doing. And so the proceeds from the album actually went to benefit the scholarship programs and the programs that they did for youth, in addition to promoting this festival. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know much about bluegrass, you know, like Rocky Top, that's what I knew about bluegrass. Um, but I did really have a great appreciation for education. And I really, really super wanted to support youth. So it kind of kind of drew me in and I, I was exposed through that process and by attendance at the festival to a whole new level of master musicians and a whole other community of people who like master musicians. Um, and I thought it was just a bunch of yee-haw, um, <laughs> but it turned out it's not yee-haw. It was like, oh wow, this is really great. I love live music for that reason, especially like being outdoors when it's nice out, um, seeing uh, the music. And also, I got to volunteer, and I also got to learn how to MC. They had a workshop about MCing. And um, this guy named Ron Thomason from a band called Dry Branch Fire Squad. I mean, first thing I learned, he's like, always carry a clipboard. So I did that for a lot of years. Uh, but it, it's a little hard sometimes if you got papers in there to get them out, you know. So, um, but you know, he was just really kind to share his talent uh, behind the mic, whether you're fronting a band or emceeing at a show or a music festival. So I've had the opportunity to emcee at a lot of different festivals around the Northeast. I really enjoy that. I, I enjoy being part of the scene and being up close and personal. Um, on April Fool's Day in 1992, after my morning drive shift, and I, I 
don't know if it was because I had invited my dog in to howl on April Fool's Day or what exactly happened, but when I did get up, because he did, he liked, he liked to sing happy birthday, no kidding, um, if you can imagine, but it, that, that was his howl. Uh, he loved that song, his ears always perked up. Um, so, uh, but I, my program director said, we won't be needing you anymore. Um, we are downsizing. And, and that was like another term for we're automating because they really didn't need people anymore. I think that was part of that. Um, but my job as a live person was replaced by a more uh, techno advanced system. They did say, however, that I could continue doing my Sunday morning, 50,000 watts of folk, um, but I couldn't do a part-time thing. I, I needed a, a real job. And they said, but you, you can continue to be part of the family. I thought, well, my family, mm, they, who's going to feed my family? And so, uh, so I ended up getting, um, doing some part-time jobs, working for a radio station in Vermont, um, with program director Tim Tobin, who was on the staff of SLE and also former staff member at the Newport Folk Festival. Um, I worked up there and I also worked at a radio station in uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts called WRSI. Um, now I think they call it The River. And those, those two radio stations have wonderful formats with independent artists um, that I still love to this day. I worked there for eight years every weekend. Um, and um, Jim Olson and Tim Tobin, just wonderful human beings. Jim Olson went on to found a record company called Signature Sounds. And he has been and probably always will be a real champion for independent artists. Um, and then I realized that in order to you know, pay for the insurance and everything, I needed a real job. So I've been working in the nonprofit sector ever since, ever since 1992. Um, that's where I really found a home. And then about that time when everything seemed to be cur Fuffled, um, Carl Watanabe from NHPR invited me to uh, do the folk show. That was like 28 years ago. He invited me to do the folk show. I filled in a couple times for the then host Dan Murphy, and um, and then he just said, "Hey, you want to do it?" And and I was so happy. I was so thrilled. You know, I took my um, I took my books with me. You know, I took my my uh, folk. Encyclopedia, I took my Rise Up Singing book, you know, and I took my, my Scott Alaric book, Deep Community, you know, I took all these books, I had all my resources, and he said, whoa, 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 people don't care what you know. They just want to hear the music. So that's probably the third best advice I ever got. Just keep it about the music. Nobody really wants to know what Kate McNally knows. So. Um, so when somebody, I read somewhere I have an encyclopedic knowledge, I'm like, if I did, I don't have it anymore. Um, <laughs> um, so I got to do this show and I had great support from a volunteer. She volunteered at the station pro pro probably for 30 years until she passed away. Um, and um, I've got to say, she was a huge Shaw Brothers fan. Anybody know who the Shaw Brothers are? Mm -hmm. They did that song, New Hampshire Naturally, and I like to teach the world to sing. She was a huge fan of theirs. And they came in to do a live set. They were twin brothers, Ron and Rick. And um, they were in the studio, this was live, and they were playing, and the boom for the microphone started slipping down. And these were very tall men. And so <laughs> their Rick or Ron, I'm not sure which one, they were twins just kept going down, down, <laughs> down. And he was practically playing his banjo on one knee. And uh, they never did come back. Um, I, I don't know if that's why, but I also stopped doing live interviews, largely because now we're on the sixth floor and it's a real pain in the neck to get people up and down the elevator. So I pre-record them, usually on Sunday afternoons, I bring people in. So uh, I want to talk about the interviews, some of the, some of the people that have come through. But first, I want to hear another one from Tom Pirazzoli. Ooh. Tom, do you have another song you could play? Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Do you guys want me to do, will you sing along? If I do a song, you can sing along? Sure. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah? All right. <laughs> and I'm going to do a song by a buddy of mine named John Gorka. And this is kind of a little bit, a little bit uh, like he's not sure he wants to be a person either. 
haven't done the song in a bit, but I kind of played it once at home this afternoon. We'll see how I remember it. When I grow up, I want to be a tree. I want to make my home with the birds and bees and the squirrels. They can count on me when I grow up to be a tree. I let my limbs get stiff, put my feet in the ground, take winters off, settle down. Keep my clothes till they turn brown When I grow up, I'm gonna settle down now, This is your part, I'm gonna reach And I'm gonna reach I'm gonna reach I'm gonna reach Reach for the sky I'm gonna reach You're good! I'm gonna reach I'm gonna reach Till I know why Till I know why this is why I have a Pete Seeger haircut, you see? <laughs> now when the spring comes around, I'm gonna get real green. When the dogs come around, I'm gonna get real mean. On windy days, I'll bend and lean. When I grow up, I'm gonna get real green. If I should fall, Storm or slumber, please don't turn me into lumber. I'd rather be a Louisville slugger swinging for the seats. You guys ready? Because I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach, reach for the sky. Open your mouth. I'm going to reach. I'm going to reach. I'm going to reach till I know why. Yeah, when I grow up, I'm going to be a tree. I'm going to make my home with the birds and bees. The squirrels can count on me when I grow up to be a tree. One more time. Cause I'm going to reach. I'm going to reach. Yeah, I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach, I'm going to reach till I know why, till I know why. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. That was great. You know, John Gorka was one of the folks that that came by the studio. He's been by a few times. He came by with a group called Red Horse. Um, that was Eliza Gilkison and Lucy Kaplansky. They do, were doing a little trio thing for a while and, and they recorded a wonderful al album called Red Horse. But he's also been by just a couple of times. What a nice, nice man he is. Um, support his music if you get a chance. He's also written some really incredible tunes, but what a wonderful guest he was. Other guests that came by, um, including John Gorka, well, Tom and Wendy have been by, Katie Curtis, Garnet Rogers, Tom Paxton, I talked to him on the phone, Cheryl Wheeler came by, Tom Rush, Bela Fleck, Bill Staines, Gordon Bach, Harvey Reed, and Joyce Anderson, David Surratt, the late David Surratt, Susie Burke, um, Dave Mallett, Tom Rush, just a few of the folks that have stopped in. We've also had some local folks maybe you're more familiar with, Decatur Creek, um, uh, Malcolm Doglish, Lown Wainwright came by, Tim O'Brien, the Mammals, they're going to be doing a show nearby pretty soon, and the great Julie Snow, as well as a group that used to be together in King called Anima Terra. We had a whole studio full of these gals that came in to sing, and I also had 13 fiddles, uh, excuse me, no, not fiddles, that would be easier, uh, 13 Irish harps in the oh studio. 13 oh Irish harps, the Irish Harp Orchestra yeah. came by and it was it was really fun. It was amazing to see all these harps in one place. And another great resource, um, Jim Rooney, who is just an amazing, yeah. amazing uh, gentleman, longtime producer for people like John Prine and uh, Nancy Griffith and Iris DeMint. So um, I've had the pleasure of interviewing lots of folks in my time. The list goes on and on. I also interviewed on the phone Nancy Griffith. Um, it was horrible, 
horrible. <laughs> um, never. I was at my job and talking. I was at, in a. I worked in a soup kitchen. And I was in like n near where they keep the freezer for everything and trying to talk into this microphone, this telephone, and um, neither Nancy or I could hear each other. It's just disgusting. Um, and I also did a, a really horrible phone interview with Doc Watson that consisted mostly of yes and no answers. Um, <laughs> I don't do phone interviews anymore. It's awful. You know, it's awful. I want to see people in person. Um, I want to see them in person. So, and that was, that was a long time ago. So um, those, those folks that I mentioned, um, they all fit into my bucket for folk music, but the bucket is so much bigger than the little dibble drabble that I mentioned. So who's on my dream list for people to stop in? Well, Joni Mitchell, <laughs> Brandi Carlisle, she's pretty amazing. Daryl Scott's a great songwriter. He wrote a song called You'll Never uh, Leave Harlan Alive. Just an incredible songwriter. I love his voice too. Greg Brown, mm. would love to have mm. him come. Rudy Toot Toot in my studio. Um, Iris Dement, Joan Baez, Billy Strains is pretty awesome. Young talent, he's an amazing guitar player. And of course, Bob Dylan. Hey, Bob. Um, and Steve Earle, I'd like to I'd like to sit down and chat yeah. with Steve Earle as well. So if you know any of those folks, you know, <laughs> just tell them I said hi, and then I'll put the kettle on if they want to come by the station. So, uh, oh, I got to meet with did I did I tell you I got to see him? Um, we had a nice chat. It was I was hours long, really. It was a long conversation with Arlo Guthrie. So usually when I have people at the studio, I like them to play music. Because remember I said, Carl Watanabe said, it's about the music. Well, Arlo Guthrie had a lot to say, and I still have those recordings of our visit. And I get to visit him uh, near where Alice's restaurant was. That was really very cool. Um, there, was, um, there was folk music before Kate McNally. Um, in 1981, um, Weibo launched. And uh, they had a, a program called Just Folk. Um, the station had folk music on Saturday nights from 8 to midnight and Sundays from 6 to 11 at one point. And I believe when I first started at the folk show, it was from 7 to 11 and somewhere along the line it got trimmed down. And you know what I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be honest, every time a fun drive would happen and they'd say, we need 20 callers, uh, I'd be like, oh no, what if you only get <laughs> then I'm done. I'm out of here. I was always afraid that the folk show was at risk of being taken away. And you know what? There was some controversy back in the 80s after changes in the music programming at NHPR. Um, and it, whatever those changes were, it led listeners to rally. They really did rally and they filled up Representatives Hall in support of folk music on the radio. So uh, the folk community has been very vocal in New Hampshire, thankfully. So thank you if you have an interest in I folk music. There. Thank you for that support, you were there. So uh, the original, so uh, just let me also say that uh, since NHPR was launched, the three programs that are still there, Morning Edition, All Things Considered, mm -hmm. and The Folk Show. Folk show. Yeah. So that's yeah. pretty cool, right? Yeah. So at one time it was called Just Folk, and then they renamed it in 1987 to Folk. Not Just Folk, Folk. And then um, in 1989 it became Contemporary and Traditional Folk and Acoustic Music. So I'm lucky I could say Kate McNally. I don't know if I could say that. Um, so the C-T-F-A-M. C-T-A, you're listening to the C-T-F-A-M. Um, and then in 1990, <laughs> somebody said, let's just call it the folk show. So volunteers ran the, volunteers ran the deal for the first dozen or so years. Um, and I gotta tell you, if you asked any number of those people like Susie Burke or Arnie Alpert or uh, Graham Chinoweth, Patrick Hornick, some of those volunteers that were originally there, Jack Beard, if you ask them what their definition of folk music was, you'd probably get a different kind of view of their buckets. I cannot define folk music. I just can't. I have a better sense of what isn't folk music than what is folk music. So if you were expecting me to tell you what it is, sorry. Um, so how does that relate to community? Well, um, I, I consulted the expert, Google, right? 
and uh, found this, this uh, definition embedded within folk music is a rich tradition of folklore with songs often weaving together tales and narratives that have been passed down through generations. And these songs serve as a window into the cultural heritage of a community, providing insights into their values, customs, and belief systems. So I think that's pretty reasonable. OK, I'll go with that. Um, Pete Seeger said, I try not to get in argument over defining folk music. All definitions change with the centuries. He wrote that in 1960. He said, the definitions of folk song and folk singers are liable to change also. What forethought. Folks will insist on it. I saw him in Peterborough at the townhouse, and I just loved being at that show. Was, I saw him a couple times, but that particular show was really inspiring for me because he would say, come on, sing. You can sing. Sing. Everybody can sing, you know, and, and you know, it kind of stressed. You can sing. Just do it. Sing. This is community. Um, I just love that. He, he pushed that. So whether you're singing Wem Away or Michael Rowe, The Boat Ashore, Wade in the Water or Tom Paxton's The Last Thing on My Mind, whether you like folk music or not, you know, if you ever meet somebody like, oh, I folk music. Um, you know, whether you like it or not, folk music with a capital F and a really broad brush, uh, just remain open. Just remain open to the possibility that all that the genre of folk music offers. It's traditional, it's contemporary, it's a tune, it's a song, it's a story, it's a feeling. It's the glue for country dancing, or country dancing, and all that that community, that's another community, the contra dancers and the Morris dancers and the country dancers. It's like warm bread, potluck dinner, a dance and a swing, a waltz and a bow. Uh, folk music captures us in a place and time, and it catapults us to the here and the now. You know, it's always going to be the here and now. There's something about the here and now that's ever present, even from an old song. So we keep singing, and we keep singing along, and we vow to never stop telling the stories that really matter. And to me, that's the importance of folk music. Folk songs can be sung to mourn our longing for our homelands, like in an Irish ballad, or it could be bagpipes pining across the moor. Folk songs are timeless, like blown in the wind. This land is your land. Where have all the flowers gone? So to just kind of sum it, um, how many years must a mountain exist before it's washed to the sea? Right? How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? That's a no-brainer. When will they ever learn? This land was made for you and me. Folk songs are timeless. They're timeless. So, February 5th, 2003, my husband and I had a fire at a 1700s farmhouse in Nelson. It was owned by our landlord, Frankie Upton, and we lost everything. My husband helped me out our second story kitchen window onto our roof where there just happened to be a wooden ladder. It led us to safety. We lost our four-legged bestie, my singing dog, Merlin, and the rest of our pets, but we made it out with our lives. And the folk community rallied. We were given temporary housing, and clothing, and support, and some friends held a benefit bluegrass festival inside at Kane State, and the Peterborough Folk Music Society had a benefit show, which really featured a who's who of friends, neighbors, musicians from all over. As we sat in the audience listening to the concerts, MC Vance Gilbert joke and vamp as he does, we had a little respite for our loss and a sense of community that I had never experienced before. Gives me goosebumps to think about it. See, as a military dependent, I spent a lot of time feeling a bit like an interloper. Moving here, I was a visitor. I wasn't quite rooted. I wasn't really one of you, but, but that moment, in that space, with that support, really changed everything about my view of my community. So let's fast forward to the pandemic. We had a virtual sing-along during the folk show. We used our Facebook group, which is called NHPR Folk, if you want to hang out with us there. It gave me goosebumps to know that folks were there during the pandemic. We'd play sing-along songs. On Sunday night, people would be singing along, and they would send pictures of themselves, or they would send videos of themselves singing. <laughs> um, you know, and it, it really did give me goosebumps to know that there were people that were in the same boat as I was, 
Um, and uh, that, that community piece kept me grounded. It kept a lot of people grounded, I think. Music has the ability to ground us and to give us a little hope and a little home. Um, remember I said I pulled the Clancy Brothers 45 out of the bin? Well, um, when I visited the cellar hole or the burned out portion of the house, there were a few things remaining. There was a cast iron griddle. There was a couple record albums. And it, was, it kind of reminds me of the song, the, uh, apple and the Lilac and the Apple. Kate Wolf does that song. Well, one of the albums in that burned out basement was the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makeham. So I couldn't play it anymore. It's kind of a little warped. But, um, and Wendy was there. She was there almost immediately with a tub of clothes, including a Folkway t-shirt, a new address book, which I now needed, and a few books. So Wendy, can we hear one more song? It's not me. Yeah. Oh. They're coming to get me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hit the ground. <laughs> Hit the dirt. So Wendy Keith, can we please hear? Sure. Well, we've had one song about critters. I've got a song about monkeys. It's kind of about monkeys, but it's also about refining the fine art of adulting. <clears throat> and there is a place now that I know you can sing. You're on the hook. And at the end, if you want to make live monkey sounds, you're free to do that too. <laughs> circus, not my monkeys, not my circus, not my monkeys, take what you need, leave the rest, getting go is just the best, not my circus, not my monkeys, there may be high wire acts and circus clowns, elephants, girls in lacy suits hanging upside down. Peanuts, popcorn, crack and jack, cotton candy too. They'll entertain you all you want, it's up to you. Not my circus, this is your part. Not my monkeys, let's try it again. Not my circus, not my monkeys, very good. Take what you need, leave the rest. Letting go is just the best. Not my circus, not my monkeys, very good. Walk your side of the street and I'll walk mine. We'll walk apart or together and that's just fine. I've got this hula hoop all around my soul. I don't need all those monkeys to keep me whole. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Very good. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Take what you need, leave. Rest. Letting go, it's just the best. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Very good. Ready now. We were flying on the trapeze. Whoa, I'm scared to let it go. Yes, you gotta let go of the old one to grab onto the new one. Then you will soar. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Uh-uh, not my circus, not my monkeys. Take what you need, leave the rest. Letting go is just the best. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Let's try one more time. Not, not my, my circus, circus, not my monkeys. Very good. Not my circus, not my, my monkeys. Oh, no, they're not. Take what you need, leave the rest. Letting go, it's just the best. Not my circus, not my monkeys. That's right, last time. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Okay, one more time. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Woo, woo, woo. Where you go? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. The name of uh, Wendy's latest album with oh, her alleged oh band. That's a real thing. <laughs> Wendy Keith and her alleged band. It's about oh. time. Oh, go ahead. And we have a live show uh, next Friday night okay. in Bennington at the Town okay. Hall, 8 o'clock. 
All right, so if you didn't get enough, go visit the monkeys. I mean, <laughs> so I don't think I've defined folk music for you tonight. Um, I think I've shared some of my experience with community, and um, maybe some of you will decide you want to join our folk music community in some way or another. You know, we could, couldn't really talk about the shows and whatnot without mentioning how important the people that put on the shows, the concert organizers, uh, organizers the, um, the uh, coffee house organizers, people that put on the dances. There's Ben and Deb, Carol, Alan, Tom, Val, Larry, Liz and Barry. That's just here in our immediate area. There's lots of volunteers who park cars and bake goodies. Um, they do the sound. You know, they make things happen. They make it all come together and happen. Um, I, I hope also I've been able to share the good fortune I've had with being connected with this community and also the folk music community. Folk, community, and good fortune. And I wish you all the best with that. And I thank you so much. If you haven't had a chance to join us on Sundays, I hope you'll try to check it out. You can also, you can also scream it online if you're really tech savvy, or you can even just turn your little dial. Maybe you have a transistor. You could find it on there. Um, check it out. We're Sundays, 7 to 10, and then an encore on Fridays from 9 to midnight. Um, and if you're joining us, um, on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with us here um, at the Jeffrey Civic Center. Um, just a heads up that there's a new Stan Rogers box set um, in the marketplace in the coming weeks. I hope to be able to play some of a, uh, the legendary Stan Rogers some from the new box set. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and letting me share uh, my story with you here. Before we take a question or two, I want to remind everyone that thanks to the hard work of John Duval and Nancy Beltet, we have a wonderful reception uh, immediately following. I want to remember a couple of things that uh, I usually forget, one of which is to acknowledge our sponsors, the Savings Bank of Walpole and Beltet's. And uh, I want to thank uh, Sean Driscoll and Ed Ozick, our super audiovisual expert. <laughs> I want to say, Wendy and Tom, that this was a great treat having yeah. you. <laughs> a question or two, a comment or two. I have one. Go ahead. <laughs> but I'd like to hear from anyone online. I want to say that as you were talking, I remembered when I first loved folk music. This will surprise you. I heard Burl Ives oh, yeah, yeah. singing Kisses Sweeter Than Wine. Yeah. That, that will date me. <laughs> but my question is, what can you tell us about Willie Nelson? He's really old. Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, I, my mother was a big fan of Willie Nelson. And I took her to see Willie Nelson. And it was really such a highlight. I was also able to take her to see Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, but I took, I, I went to see Willie Nelson in concert and I got to meet his, I took my mom to meet his harmonica player, whose name is Mickey Raphael, who's just an incredible, sometimes I hear a song and I'm like, that is Mickey Raphael, it's gotta be, because nobody plays the harmonica like him. So there's a lot of new uh, essential recordings from Willie Nelson that you might need to add to your songbook, but you know, when he was a young man, he, he played, I mean, he's been playing music for a real, probably 85 years, <laughs> you know? <laughs> he's been playing for a really long time, and I just love his stuff. So 
Um, you know, I love the song Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. The song Crazy, you know, uh, there's just a lot of songs that I really favor by Willie Nelson, but other than that, I don't know much. <laughs> yes. Add, you mentioned the recent album that the, the box set coming out with Stan Rogers, and you also mentioned Jim Rooney and Nancy Griffith, and he's come out with a new production that's a tribute yeah. album to uh, Nancy Griffith, who we lost a couple of years ago, and it's called More Than a Whisper, which is a line from one of our most beautiful songs. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, Jim Rooney's new production, More Than a Whisper, a tribute to Nancy Griffith. Yes. Yes, uh, Kate, I wanted to just thank you for the intimacy and the audio you bring on Sunday night. Uh, you must be mic'd very well. Uh, the oh, yeah. audio I'll engineer is I'll great. Like this far away. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it's so close. 50,000 watts of folk. So that works so good. Um, any upcoming folk festivals in New Hampshire you'd recommend? The only one I, could, I know a lot of them haven't, um, they haven't uh, announced their lineups yet. And it's not in New Hampshire, it's actually in Maine. The Ossipi Valley one is going to be a really good one. It's always a very nice festival. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a river you can jump in <laughs> if you want to go swimming. That's one of the benefits of that festival. But it's a very nice festival with a lot of different stages. So keep your eye out for the Ossipi Valley Festival. You can also look online at nhpr.org and check out our folk music and dance calendar. I have a volunteer that puts all that together. My friend Jim from Greenville, um, New Hampshire's. He, he does that work at, at home. So I really rely on my volunteers to help pull that information together for you. So please utilize that. So it's a great resource done by volunteers. What's the best movie about folk music? Oh boy. <laughs> you know, I, I can't think of the best movie. There's, you know, there, there have been some nice collections. Tom Rush has put a, put a nice, DVD together celebrating Club 47. Um, that's a really nice one. There's also some parodies on folk music that I can't think of the name of now, but, um, but you know, um, I'm sure you could Google it. You know, my best friend is Google. <laughs> Dr. Google. Well, yes, I knew if I looked in the back, I, stand up so we can hear you. When you consider that everybody buys, gets their music now in a free stream and nobody buys music anymore, what you're doing gives it value. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Next, next month, we have a wonderful speaker, Susie Spickle from the Harris Center. Some of you may know her. I'm sorry to say I'm going to be out of town, but Jeff Crocker, anybody here know Jeff Crocker? <laughs> <laughs> Has agreed to uh, stand up here and moderate the discussion. So please come first Friday of April and bring your friends uh, there are half a dozen empty seats here today. I apologize for that, but thank you all so much. And next, David Beltet, the president of the Jaffrey Civic Center. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Uh, we really enjoyed your show. And on behalf of the uh, Jaffrey Civic Center, and we have a few gifts in here, and. I might add it was apropos that the fireworks were going out. <laughs> I got my own fireworks in there? Yeah, there were fireworks. <laughs> well, maybe a couple other things. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. And uh, please remember, everyone, we have refreshments. So stick around and have a glass of wine, a few canapes, and maybe ask Kate a few questions. Take my pictures of the little right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.